So in this video we're going to take a look at investing in funds and we're going to look at one type in particular, the investment trust, and explain why we generally prefer it to its main rival, the unit trust. So as an investor, why do I want a fund? Uh, after all, I could go out and just buy shares individually, build up a portfolio of 10, 20 or 50 and manage it myself. Well, a fund of course simplifies things. I just hand my money to a fund manager in return for a set number of units or shares, depending on the investment, and then they take care of investing my money for me. And uh, that means I have less administration, uh, I'll pay, of course, the fund manager to do the job, and I hopefully get, if you believe the advertising, uh, the benefit of their expertise in a particular market. The question then is, if I want to buy a fund, what do I buy? And before we kick off with investment trusts specifically, and the reasons why we tend to prefer them at Money Week to the unit trusts, which are their main rivals in many ways, um, what types of fund are there? Well, essentially, uh, there are two basic types, um, the so-called actively managed and the ones which are passive. And really today we're focusing on actively managed funds and what we're saying is that although not all of them are actively managed, <coughs> a big part of the industry is unit trusts and slightly less well known are the ones we like, the investment trusts or to give them their full title, investment trust companies. Now active management does what it says on the tin, this suggests that I'm paying a fund manager or director to actually make investment decisions on my, on my behalf and I'll pay them for it. A passively managed fund on the other hand simply tracks an index or sector let's say and there are quite a few exchange traded funds that do exactly that or ETFs. Now this is a slight simplification, I mean there are passive unit trusts around but Today we're going to focus on actively managed funds, which tends to keep you over here. In another video we'll take a look at exchange traded funds, which are mainly trackers or passive, and uh, some of the pros and cons of those. So what is it about investment trusts that we think often makes them more attractive than unit trusts? Number one, cost. And that's a very important one. For investors, uh, you don't want to be throwing away more money than you have to every year on charges. That's going to eat into your returns and eat into what your fund is eventually worth. So the problem with unit trusts is they are allowed to spend an awful lot of money on advertising, and many of them do. When you see an advert on the tube or on a bus or in a magazine, chances are, if it's a fund, it will be some kind of unit trust. Uh, and that's fine, but the problem is, of course, that that's got to be recovered somewhere. All that advertising spend, all that marketing spend has got to come out of somewhere and lo and behold it comes out of your money. So although investment trust companies are often seen as the kind of uh, inferior twin if you like, um, they're, they're not often as widely marketed because they're subject to restrictions imposed on companies. Nonetheless, charges tend to be lower. The charging structures are different which can make it a little bit more difficult to make the comparison. Unit trusts Initial charges, 4-5%, often rebated through a fund supermarket, annual management fees and sometimes exit fees. Investment trust companies, typically you've got the bid to offer spread on the shares and you've also got an annual management fee. But taking all those into account, usually for similar investment objectives, an investment trust is the cheaper option. So that's one reason why we quite like them. Number two, there is the possibility with an investment trust that you might pick it up at a discount to its net asset value. Discounts of 10% or more are quite common and that's not something you get with the unit trust and that simply comes down to the way that these things are priced. For a unit trust, basically what a fund manager will do is come up with a net asset value for the investments that uh, he or she controls and I'm going to put a, a random and obviously small figure on that of 100,000 sterling. So that's the NAV of the fund derived by looking up 
the prices of all the shares in the portfolio at, say, the end of the day. And then uh, the fund manager will look at the number of units in issue. So in very simple terms, let's say there are 100,000 units that have been sold to investors. And you would expect, and with the unit trust you'd normally see, that those units are worth, let's say, one pound each. So 100,000 times a pound is 100,000. In other words, this valuation is directly driving that unit price. And that's a feature of unit trusts, which means you don't have the opportunity to buy them at a discount in the asset value. But what does that mean? Well, with investment trusts, here's the point. They are actually companies, and as companies, they have publicly quoted and traded share prices. And that means that that one pound is by no means automatic. For example, if this is an investment trust company, the corporate director might well look up, the fund manager might look up what all the assets in the fund are worth, come to the conclusion that's £100,000 at open market value, and then, as an investor, you might look up the open market share price, because with an investment trust, despite the name, this is a listed company on the London Stock Exchange with a quoted share price. So you might look up the share price, and slightly to your surprise, let's say it's 90p. So the market capitalisation of this thing at the stock exchange is more like 90,000. In other words, the whole thing is trading, in terms of it, the shares that it's issued to investors, at a 10% discount to the value of its underlying net assets. And that discount is quite attractive. Buy the right investment trust company, and effectively, you're going to get its future performance in terms of that NAV going up, hopefully, plus you may see the gap between its market capitalisation and the assets that it owns and controls on your behalf narrowing. So, in other words, you can end up with a nice little boost to the returns you get from the investment trust, and that's just not possible with the unit trust. And another thing we like about investment trust stems from what I've just said, and it's this. Investment trust companies are listed at the London Stock Exchange. You, you can check out the share price every day, you can look it up on, on the usual terminals and screens and so on. Um, and that means that investment trust companies are what I'm going to rather grandly call continuously priced. In other words, if I want to sell my shares in an investment trust company, I can do it at 11, 3, 4, as long as the market's open. Fine. It's like selling shares in Tesco or BP. I look up the ticker, off I go. Unit trusts, not true. Unit trusts are not listed. You can't buy and sell them on the London Stock Exchange. You need to get a valuation for your units from a fund manager, and they may only let you do that once or twice a day. You may have to wait for a unit valuation. And that can be a little bit frustrating. As an investor, the liquidity on an investment trust is often that little bit better. Now, as a long-term investor, you might say, I'm not that bothered, but it's another factor that just makes investment trust companies a little more open, let's say. And finally, gearing. Because investment trusts are actually companies, they are allowed to borrow, just as other companies are allowed to borrow. Now, unit trusts can borrow too, but regulations stipulate uh, much tighter control, often, over the amount they can borrow and for how long. And gearing, if you pick the right investment trust company, is a good thing. It enhances returns. And here's how. Just to take that final point on gearing. Let's say we have an investment trust company and a unit trust. Make up some very, very simple short balance sheets. So, total net assets, 100,000 sterling. Total net assets, 100,000 sterling. Very simple numbers, obviously too small to be realistic in the real world, but that's fine. Um, funding, so assets, 100,000 in both cases. Funding, the investment trust company is 50% funded by equity. That's people buying its shares and 50% funded by debt. So 
So you've got assets of 100,000, funded by a mixture of shareholders and external debt coming to 100,000 too. The unit trust also has assets of 100,000, but because it's not allowed to borrow, all equity funded. Uh, and by that I mean that the money's been put in by unit holders, investors. Okay, so far so what? So what's my point? The point is this. Let's imagine that these two have a tremendous year. Assets under management double. So a year later, revaluing the net asset value, that's gone to 200k, and that's gone to 200k as well. Okay, here's the point. As an equity investor, which one would I rather be in? And the answer is the investment trust company. Because as an equity investor here, your money's been doubled. If the unit trust were liquidated tomorrow, in theory, anyone who put money in here has seen it double. Over here, even better still, if the investment trust were liquidated tomorrow, £200,000 of investment sold, £200,000 of cash, let's say, clear the debt, that leaves 150000 down here. In other words, the initial 50000 from last year has become 150000 and that's a bigger return on equity investment. So gearing in an investment trust company, assuming you pick the right one, can enhance returns. The problem, of course, is the whole sector got tarnished by the split capital investment trust crisis a few years back, where, of course, the exact reverse happened. Um, a heavily geared investment trust company can wipe out your capital much faster than a unit trust. So, we like investment trust companies at Money Week. They often don't get the attention of unit trusts, and that's partly because they're not as heavily marketed. But the four reasons we like them, cost. Often, they're cheaper than the equivalent or virtually identical unit trust. Secondly, there's the opportunity to buy them at a discount and at asset value. That's not something you get with unit trusts. Thirdly, continuous pricing makes them that a little bit more flexible, that a little bit more open. And fourthly, gearing. Not always a good thing, but certainly is, provided you pick the right investment trust company.